All right, day two of How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell. We are on chapter three. And from yesterday when we read, we found out um, what the bet was, what they're gonna do, 15 worms in 15 days, and he gets 50 bucks. And he wants to buy um, this mini bike from down the street from this kid with that. Um, we found out that they, yep, they said, okay, they're gonna do the bet. There's four of them, two on each side, two for the guy that's eating them and two for the guys that gotta pay. Um, they dug up the first worm and they got the worm out of the manure pile, remember? And they were like, oh, that's not fair. And we're like, hey, but we said we could, okay? All right, so now in chapter three, this is called training camp. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Billy was doing push-ups in the deserted horse barn. He wasn't worried about eating the first worm. But people were always daring him to do things, and he'd found it better to look ahead and try to figure things out, get himself ready. Last winter, Alan had dared him to sleep out all night in the igloo that they built in Tom's backyard. Well, why not? Bill thought to himself, what could happen? Well, right about midnight, huddled and shivering under his blankets in the darkness, he began wondering if he should give up and go home. He felt like aching stones. His feet felt like aching stones in his boots and even his tongue inside his mouth was cold. But half an hour later, he was stubbornly dancing about outside in the moonlight to warm himself up. Tom's dog, Martha, had come along with six other dogs, all in a pack. And Billy had coaxed them into the igloo and blocked the door with an orange crate. And after the dogs had stopped wrestling and nipping and barking and sniffing around, they all gone to sleep in a heap with Billy in the middle, as warm as an onion in a stew. But he hadn't been able to think of anything special to do to prepare himself for eating a worm. So he was just limbering up a little bit, push-ups and knee bends and jumping jacks. He was all red-faced and perspiring. Nearby in an orange crate, he set out bottles of ketchup and Worcestershire sauce and jars of piccalilli and mustard, a box of crackers, salt and pepper shaker, and lemon juice, and a slice of cheese, and his mother's tin of cinnamon and sugar shaker, a box of Kleenex, a jar of Marciano cherries, some horseradish, and a plastic honey bear. Tom's head appeared around the door. You ready? Billy scrambled up, brushing back his hair. Yeah. Ta-da! Tom flung the door open and Alan marched in carrying a covered silver platter in both hands. Joe was slouching along beside him with a napkin over one arm. Nodding and smiling, obsequentiously, Tom dragged another orange crate over beside the first, and Alan set the silver platter on it. A chair, cried Alan, a chair from Monsieur. Come on, said Billy, cut the clown in. Tom found an old milking stool in one of the old horse stalls. Joe dusted off with his napkin, showing his teeth, and then ushered Billy to it. Ladies and gentlemen, I present my masterpiece, Vem a la mud. He swept the cover off the platter. Oh, cried Billy, recoiling. The huge night crawler sprawled limpy in the center of the platter, brown and steamy. Boiled, said Tom. We boiled it. Billy stormed out of the barn, kicking barrels and posts and arguing. A night crawler isn't a worm. If it was a worm, it'd be called a worm. A night crawler is a night crawler. Finally, Joe ran off to get his father's dictionary. Night crawler. Noun. Earthworm. Example, a large earthworm found in the soil surface at night. Billy kicked a barrel. It still wasn't fair. He didn't care what any dictionary said. Everybody knew the difference between a nightcrawler and a worm. Now look at that thing. Oh man, it's as big as a souvenir pencil from the Empire State Building. Oh, he poked it with his finger. Alan said they'd agreed right at the start that he and Joe could choose the worms. If Billy was gonna cheat, that bat was off. He got up and started for the door. He guessed he had other things to do besides argue all day with a fink. So Tom took Billy aside in the horse stall and put his arm around Billy's shoulder and he talked to him about George Cunningham's brother's mini bike 
and how they could ride it on the trail, under the power lines, behind Odell's farm, up and down the hills, pounding over rocks, vroom, vroom, vroom. Sure, it was a big worm, but it'd only be a couple more bites. Didn't he want, did he really want to lose this mini bike over two bites? Slap enough mustard and ketchup and horseradish on it, he wouldn't even know that he tasted it. Yeah, said Billy. I could probably eat this one, but I gotta eat 15. Well, you can't quit now. Look at them. He nodded at Alan and Joe waiting beside the orange crates. They'll tell everyone you were a chicken. It'll be all over school. Come on. He led Billy back to the orange crates and sat him down and tied the napkin around his neck. Alan flourished the knife and the fork. Would Monsieur like to eat carved lengthwise or crossways? Kitchen? asked Joe, showing his teeth. Cut it out, said Tom. Here, he clapped ketchup and mustard and horseradish on the nightcrawler. He squeezed a few drops of lemon juice and salted and peppered it. Billy closed his eyes and opened his mouth. On with it. Tom sliced off the end of the nightcrawler and forked it up. But just as he was about to poke it into Billy's mouth, Billy closed his mouth and opened his eyes. No. Let me do it. Tom handed in the fork. Billy gazed up at the dripping ketchup and mustard, thinking, ew, but it's, it's all right talking about eating worms, but doing it? Tom whispered in his ear, mini bite, mini bite, mini bite. Ooh, ooh. Billy poked the fork into his mouth and he chewed furiously. He gulped and he gulped and his eyes crossed and swam and squinched shut. He flapped his arms wildly and then he opened his eyes and he grinned beautifully up at Tom. Superb Gaston. Tom cut another piece, ketchup, mustard, salted, peppered, horseradish, and lemoned it and handed the fork to Billy. Billy slugged it down, smacking his lips, and so they proceeded, now sprinkling on cinnamon and sugar and a bit of cheese and some cracker crumbs and Worcestershire sauce until there was nothing left on the plate but a few stray dabs of ketchup and mustard. Well, said Billy, standing up and wiping his mouth with his napkin. So we are done with the verse course, uh, Zaggins. Let me look at your mouth, said Alan. Yeah, said Joe. See if he swallowed it all. Certainly, certainly, look as long as you want. Alan and Joe scrutinized the inside of his mouth. Okay, okay, said Tom. All right, leave him alone. Come on, come on, one down. 14 to go. How did it taste, asked Alan. Good, 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 very fine, very fine. Hoo, 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 said Billy. He flapped his arms like a big bird and began to hop around the barn crying. Good, 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 very fine, very fine. Good, good, good. Alan and Joe and Tom looked worried. Uh, yeah. Good, good, yeah, but how you feeling, Billy? Tom asked. Yeah, stop flapping around. Come on, tell us how you're feeling. They huddled together by the orange crates as Billy hopped around and around them, flapping his arms. Good, 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 very fine, very fine. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Alan whispered, he's crackers. Joe edged towards the door. Don't let him see that we're afraid, because crazy people are like dogs. They see you're afraid, they'll attack. It's a little sketch of Billy. flopping his arms around, and they're just kind of staring at him like, what's going on? And see he's gnawing on his thumbnail because he's always nervous. It couldn't be, whispered Tom, standing on his ground. The worm? Good, 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 screeched Billy, hopping higher and higher and drooling from the mouth. Come on, whispered Joe to Tom. Hey, Billy burst out of Tom suddenly in a hearty, quivering voice. Cut it out, would you? We, uh, we want to ask you something. Billy's arms flapped slower, and he tiptoed menacingly around Tom, his head cocked to one side and his cheeks puffed out. Tom hugged himself, chuckling nervously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cut it out, would you, Billy? <laughs> Billy pounced. And Joe and Alan fled the barn door, banging behind them. Billy rolled on the floor helplessly with laughter. Tom clambered up, brushing himself off. Did you see their faces? Billy said, laughing, climbing over each other to get out the door. Jeez, Joe was pale as an onion. Yeah, yeah, said Tom. Ha, 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 you fooled them. Ha, ha, jeez, Billy said up. 
Then he crawled over to the door and peered through the knot hole. Look, look at them. They're peeking over the stone wall. Watch this. He swung the door open slowly. Screeching, Billy hopped onto the door sill, into the yard and up on a stump and splashed into a puddle, flapping his arms and rolling his head. Alan Joe galloped up the hill through the high grass, yelling, here he comes, here he comes, get out of the way. <laughs> and then Billy stopped hopping and climbing up on the stump and called in a shrill girlish voice, oh boys, where are you going? I'm something to bore you, you little boys. Alan Joe stopped and looked back. Oh, you, you go at home, little boys? Are you too scared? Who's scared, you lunk, said Alan. Yeah, I, I guess I can go home without being called scared if I want to. But you're an awful in a hurry, shouted Billy. I just remembered I was supposed to help my mom wash the windows this afternoon. Yeah, 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 that's, that's all. I got to help her wash your windows. And he turned and started up through the meadow, his hands in his pockets. Yeah, yeah, said Joe, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, uh-huh. And he charged after Alan. That was chapter three and four.